Hello guys and welcome back to Trek Yards. He is, as always, Commander Cockings. And he is Captain Farley. And today we're talking about one of our Achilles heels. Things that really get to us. It's a big secret to give Stuart. Oh my goodness. Well no, it's well Star Trek. I mean, it's an oh. Achilles heel. You, oh. you, if you want to hurt me, you talk bad about Star Trek. That's how that works. Don't don't be dissing the dreadnoughts. That will that will get Ooh. his Achilles right up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you say, Stuart? <laughs> we are talking about one of the new STO ships from the Heritage Starship Bundle, the Achilles class, which was originally in Dominion Wars, I believe. Um, now, now, not the, the story arc from DS9. It wasn't in that arc. It was in the game called Dominion Wars, which was a... It, it seemed so impressive, but no one's ever played it that I know of. It's not very often talked about, no. Yeah. I don't know why. But um, it has cool cutscenes and it has cool ships and it has great like it it was cool. It just didn't I guess hit in the same way. Although those I do know it loved it, but I don't know if it's played it. Yeah, and this is the custom Federation baddie, as in big bad pew pew, which would then fight the big new Cardassian baddie pew pew, which I was kind of hoping would be the bundle as well. But that's neither here nor there. This is a proper warship thing, and a lot of the ships back in the day in those games, Activision and such, made really good fresh designs. This is possibly one of them. And this is an interesting design as well. It's uh, kind of a sleeked out, hybridized version of a Federation ship. It's got some interesting shapes and details to it, which we're going to talk about today. And we love that Stowe is bringing these old game ships into I call it real life, but playable in HD, because you can't play those games in HD. You know, we looked at Armada and such, and, and these things are, do not hold up in that way. So to see it realised is rather tremendous. Uh, so here it is, of course, in full HD. Now, we did look at this ship semi-recently, or that was ironically an old recording, um, but that was a... a, a weirdly, like I guess I mentioned it a second ago, the fact that no one talks about it meant that there was really little reference on it. So this is a proper high-quality replica licensed official we can prop finally look at it the way we've always wanted to do it so what are your thoughts now you're finally seeing it in glorious hd well first of all thank you to the sto guys for doing this kind of stuff because this means a lot to us old gamers and uh bringing some of these non-canon ships kind of more canonized a little bit so i appreciate you all you guys over at sto um yeah like i said interesting shapes interesting uh details on it as well and uh, this feels like a futuristic Starfleet design. It's kind of moved past the TNG. It's it's very similar to the Sovereign, so I get like the Dominion War era. Uh, but interesting choice of shapes. It's kind of melding some Sovereign-esque details with some Voyager details and doing a thing, which I appreciate. <laughs> How about you? Well, it, not to break the fourth wall, but we just did the, the Typhoon carrier uh, look at and that was both not detailed physically but felt detailed this to me feels very simple possibly too simple and I'm, I'm interested to see if by going through this conversation i'll, I'll feel differently uh, the way the saucer is it's just a bog standard saucer right there's almost nothing going on the back is pretty pretty dense but it feels super super simple and of course a limited game um back in the day limited polygon count whatever but it's very simple. I'd agree with the front part. The, the back part has got a lot of interesting um, details and kind of geometries going on back there, which I like. I like the new take on Federation design and still maintaining also that like Federation. The black egg something. Yes, that too. And I also like the uh, the Federate the uh, like the the. It still feels Starfleet, but it feels like the next step in uh, Starfleet ev uh, evolution. So. Well, it's definitely curvier, but not in the Prometheus style, which is nice. Now, obviously, it's missing registries, which would add a certain pop, because it's a stone model, those are a separate thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that the front red things are pulse phases, a la Defiant. Very Pretty interesting sure. detail, for sure, yeah. Not sure why they're that close to everything. I would put them... Not that they're going to hit the saucer, of course, but I wouldn't put them that integrated, personally. I kind of like it. <laughs> a lot of STO, those weapons emitters are right on the front of the saucer, and I kind of wish that they were more integrated. So I kind of like that this is there. So, 
And one of the interesting things that pops out to me instantly as soon as I looked at this picture was those bizarre collectors. Feel very much like the what Type Eleven shuttle, the one that yes. the, oh yeah the Data has in uh, Nemesis. So, or no, Insurrection, Insurrection. Sorry. Yeah, those are right off the Eleven, and also the way the grills are. Yeah, they're definitely inspired. I wonder if this came out around the same time they felt. I believe a it did. Yeah, them. yeah. Love the after fine star glowy circles, whatever they may be. Wow, Always a nice to be impulse crystals, uh, at least in the refit. So. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it makes sense. Phaser strips, though, I'm slightly concerned. There's not a lot of them, uh, and and they don't even do the full saucer. What's going on, saucer? Why are you why are you why are you not dual phaser stripping, and why is it so small? Relative I don't have a problem that. with them on the side like that and being that short. I just wish there was one at the front, like a semicircle one. There are some on the struts uh, at the top there. So okay, I get this is this is a pulse phaser torpedo gunboat which we've seen from the trailer etc of, of heritage you know, firing aft or top firing like it, it's a gunboat but you got space with some more phases you say that <laughs> but i think it might, might it might be too cluttered like i said one at the front kind of a semicircle one uh and we talked about this with the typhoon as well how there's a lot of surface detail on that and a lot of surface area and very few very small phaser strips so, yeah. Well, I'd even go with two more small phaser strips next to the front transporter emitters and some more escape pods as well. I feel like they're lacking on the neck and such. They're, they're the obvious places. The well, there we go. Okay. Like, it's cool, but it just has a has a, a slight simple vibe to me that is in keeping with more of the TOS, you know, clean aesthetic, but it's a big old warship. It's actually a warship. I can see with a bit more, bit more pew to the, to the buck. But let's go through... The next shot is, of course, the... I mean, I say all that, of course, Stuart, but here's the concept, and they are following the design. So, you, fair enough, guys. But, you know... Well, the concept is way curvier, and it is, yeah. more integrated. It feels almost something like out of Babylon 5, mm. um, as far as uh, some of those rear details go for those struts. I'm glad that the final version feels more Starfleet-like. Um... It just has more of an organic flow to it, kind of like the White Star, like I was saying from Battles, um, Babylon well, Five. So I, I get the mild impression that you know, obviously this is a a, a one talented person who sketched this, but they only have it in their brain and they're not literally. You know, when I have three more. I can render top bottom. That's accurate. The top, the, the top and the, uh, the front feel con consistent, but the the three quarters feels almost like an artist interpretation, like a bit more sleek. Uh, because he's he's concepting it in the views. I wonder if if, if Tobias who did the model took the front of the side as can and then kind of like restarted it a little bit. I wonder. Maybe that side view doesn't do much for me, honestly. That the, the back doesn't look as impressive from the side. <laughs> I do like the details on the top of the the back, and even in the final one. I just love the kind of all like I said all the geometry going on back there. But from the side, it just feels a little lacking. Well, it's it's flat without depth, which if you're trying to avoid fire, uh, some logic to that. Um, but let's keep rolling through our new renders. The back is busy. And these are the actual colors. So my question is, why are there warp <laughs> coils at the back of this primary, secondary connected I was, hull? I was just going to say that. Those would be better for impulse engines. But there are impulse engines at the, at the back of the saucer. So, I mean, they didn't forget them. I don't think you have aft coils. It's kind of a joke from the JJ films, isn't it? It's like there are aft, aft coils. The aft nacelle. Yeah, it's like there aren't. I, I now obviously I could tweak that in post to make it red, but clearly you can see this is intended as warp coils because they have the same detailing versus the impulse engine, which has a different style. Well, with the circles above, like the impulse crystal designs, or the, just the defiant style blue circles could tie into that we know that the ship ship fires a lot of armaments straight up those could be power feeds which are coming like secondary power feeds coming off the warpness uh, off the uh, warp core which feedback cycle through and then go up to the the launchers at the top maybe um seems like a little bit exposed where they are but um there's got to be some kind of reason for it and those those circles as well so i feel like that was a that was a thought process in the designer's head that has a purpose. I'm just not necessarily sure what it is, but I like that 
they kind of I could see them feeding up to that middle spine and just being part of the uh, the launch mechanisms. But I I don't know if there physically is a space enough because obviously phaser strips have internal detail too. Why isn't there like a giant spine phaser? Because like you say, then if they fell up into phasers, they could be mega not mega phasers, but they could be higher powered. And then you've literally got a beam torpedoes, a beam torpedoes. That would be. I mean, it's obviously vicious enough by itself, but I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. There's got, there's got to be a design process, like thought process behind that, because that's an odd choice. Normally, those would be impulse engines, but if, if most people design this, or, or could they been could they been another shuttle bay, a, a tri, a tri that'd bay? Be cool, that would have been, been cool. cool. Uh, you know, if this is meant to be in, in the same ish fleet as Typhoon, you could have the top be a fighter launch bay with a couple of paragwens and the, or, or the or vice versa, and then one bay be fighters, or two bays be fighters, one be shuttles. Which I don't mind the shuttle bay where it is. That's I think a nice detail with the the aft torpedoes right in the center. Yeah, those torpedoes definitely look good there. I like that. Um, it's such an odd thing to call out, but I really like that the the hull around the shuttle bay, the the proper hull, is a is a black tone, and it kind of feels like charcoal to me. Like a nice crispy, lovely charcoal texture. It kind of accents it well. Yeah, I think that kind of works. Although, in fact, the way it's kind of framed, it's almost as if the, the main hull is actually a black colour and the silver plate on top is on top versus it's silver with black indents. Mm, hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that's like a, a new armour type or just, you know, a colour choice. Um, <laughs> uh, but next we have the bottom. Well, you're right about the escape pods. That, 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 okay. And win- more windows. Huh. Yeah, more escape pods on the bottom, which I like. Um, more phaser strips. There's even some phaser strips on the side of the nacelles, which is interesting. And, and then, yeah, like a huge impulse crystal again at the bottom. So there's got to be some kind of reason for all those details. Um, hmm. Because I don't know if those are meant to be impulse crystals for the Defiant. I don't know. I don't think so. The fancy things. Yeah, and interestingly enough, this looks like it has two warp core ejection ports, which makes me wonder if it's got a dual warp core. Yeah, I could see it. It does appear like there are two ejection ports there at the bottom. And I would be fine with that for redundancy. If this thing is going to hit it hard with power and shields and weapons, I mean, can you imagine a dedicated warp core for the shields? I mean, two smaller ones, right? Maybe defiant size, but like dedicated drive. It it almost feels like there's something in the nacelles too, because there's the same kind of ports on the bottom of the nacelles. Mm. So I don't know if there's like Mm. supplement power systems in this thing, maybe? Well, you'd want this thing to be fast and maneuverable and shielded and all powered weapons, so turn up the power. But just like with a Typhoon, I'm mildly... So you've got the I don't know the scale of the ship, but clearly it's small, given there's one row of windows in the secondary hull, and a lot of nothing around that. Now, yes, there's registries that are missing, of course, that we knew that going in, but there's a lack of stuff going on there that I'm... I mean, it's a warship, it's fine, but you've got some more space to have some more things, and at the very least, more phaser strips, which there should have to be a belly one, because that's a standard and there's no belly phaser. Yeah. It's hmm. interesting too that there's warp coils on the inner parts of the nacelles, but the outer part actually has a phaser strip instead of visible warp coils on the outer s- surface. Of yeah. The Again, I think somebody who designed it had a thought process, and I just want to get into their brain and find out exactly what they were thinking. Yeah. Now, if the logic is this thing's more armored, I'd buy it. Well, I'm seeing another small thing. This is again, this is a game model based on a game model of an even older standard, so almost diminishing returns if you're being faithful but if you look next to the blinkies there's a slight cut into the, the side of the saucer on the voyager that's where the sensor greeblies are that i think is implied to be how this be the hero model you'd fill in the detail with greeblies that would really help to amp up the the detail and this is the thing if we would if i was to take this as of the norway for the squadron fan film take it up and hero it up and do a few more additions i think this thing would be absolutely ready to be heroed because, you know, the stow is as a limited amount of detail they can physically do, and they do a good, great job for that, but you could always go more. Always, right? 